Hello all. In this video, we'll be discussing a Python-based machine learning model to predict the transactions that whether the transaction is fraud or not fraud. There are various of financial services and consulting companies which use uses this particular machine learning model to check whether the transaction done within the day or a com within a company is fraud or not fraud. As there are various cases today for cyber security and criminal cases. So basically, this particular machine learning model is a classic classification problem uh, solution which tells us the transaction is fraud or not fraud. As far as the requirements of this model building is concerned, we uh, we uh, require Python programming language and a Jupyter notebook or any other Python ID on which we can build our machine learning model. So let's get started by seeing the code of this particular mo model. So as you can see that initially I have included all the necessary libraries that is NumPy and Pandas. Through, num through Pandas, I will initially import a data set of as fraud.csv to read CSV function. As you can see that this particular data set uh, contains of features like type, amount, name origin, old balance, new balance, name, old balance, new balance, is fraud or is flagged fraud. Basically, this particular column is uh, check this particular model on this particular model, we'll basically train this particular model through this particular data set and accordingly we'll test it. So we have included all the necessary libraries and through pandas we have imported our data set too. So we have see head functions, we have see tail functions which tells us the first five observations and the last five observations of a data set respectively. Data.info function that is data about information. It tells us the data type of each and every column. For example, type is of object, amount is of float, name is object. Similarly, is fraud is int, is flagged fraud is int. So basically, we have totally five data types in the data set, which is of float 64. We have three data types of integer 64 and we have three data types of object. So basically through data, data of shape, we'll check the shape of our data set, which includes that there is 6362620 rows and 11 columns. The next step is to check whether the data is screened or not. This, this particular step is for data is to check the data is clean or not. Basically, this particular function returns the counts of the null values. So as you can see that it returns the zero in each and every cell of the column. So as you can see that there is no null value present in the data set. So we can move ahead with the further operations. If it could be present, any, any integer would be present in any of these columns, then we should, we need to remove it first. This process is called as data cleaning. Hence, we have checked that there is no uh, uh, null values in the data set. So we can move ahead with the further operations. Then we have, we have displayed the count of the fraud and the flag fraud objects. As you can see that zero, zero established that there is no, uh, no fraud and one established that there is a, a fraud. So the value counts of particularly these are 632, uh, 6354407 and 632604. So as you can see, this basically is the process of data pre-processing. Data pre-processing involves making the raw data suitable for further analysis and so that we can achieve efficient and maximum results. So as you can see that we have dropped the data, we have dropped the column like name origin and name destination with axis equal to one. Axis equal to one we have for means we have dropped this particular name destination uh, name destination column and uh, uh, which is and name origin column as the, as this particular columns in the data set is of no use for further analysis and to build and train this particular model. So further we will move ahead with checking that there is no null values. So we have dropped that particular function so that our data becomes more efficient for the uh, further analysis and further operations. Secondly, we have imported the pre-processing library and through pre-processing library, we have used the concept of label encoding that is called hot label encoding which is basically a uh, algorithm which works on the binary of the binary system of the data that it, it deals with zero and zeros and one. The next thing is we have split our data set into X comma Y through the log function in Python. And we have checked whether the data is fraud or not fraud. The next is this particular code applet is that is the code applet where our model is in, is in the train test split phase. 
this particular model is in train test split free. So I, I can write it here train test figures. So as you can see that this particular model is in, is in the train test split phase of this model building process. Test size equals to 0.4 means we we'll use 40% of data to train our model and next and remaining data will use to test our model with a random set of 40. So as you can see that this particular pre-processing function we have used a basic uh, uh, library that is standard scalar algorithm. Basically through the fit function we have fit our particular model into a standard scalar function. Accordingly we have used naive wise and Gaussian classifier to, uh, to fit this particular model into this particular al algorithm so that we can achieve maximum results. So as you can see that this particular code applet fits the model into a Gaussian name based classifier and hence predict the results. At the last we have predicted the accuracy of the model that is 0.99 that is 99% accuracy that is a great accuracy and hence we have successfully built a great model with an excellent uh, uh, accuracy. So this was basically a basically a proper classifi classification solution problem of a uh, machine learning model to predict the transaction to be fraud and non-fraud. I hope the things are clear guys. The code is precise and understandable enough. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. To getting for uh, getting more interesting stuff in technical domain, please do subscribe to our channel My Project Ideas to get some more interesting and uh, quality stuff in the technical domain. Thank you so much guys.